Today we are going to try and do something that I have never done before, and that is fix an oil leak. No, kidding. That is find an oil leak with UV dye. Real simple premise here. You've got your bottle of dye, oil system, pour in the dye, and we're going to run it, get that oil circulated, and and we'll check it out up top, put it up on the lift, take a look underneath, and see exactly where all this oily crap is coming from. All right, we're out for a drive, warming up the car. Put, uh, I don't know, five miles on it, something like that. And uh, try and get it nice and warm, get that oil flowing, and hopefully we'll see where some of the leaks are. I'm guessing there's more than one. All right, back in the garage, warmed it up. Get it up in the air. Here's a better demo of what this stuff looks like. I got a, uh, a larger black light source here. And you can see that stuff just fluoresces like crazy. So as, as soon as we see some, it'll be obvious. So let's take a look under the car. Here we are after a quick drive. I don't know if this will really come out. Yeah, it's gonna be close. So right there, that's where I was thinking. And there is a little bit, but actually not a whole lot. I'm now starting to think that the leak may actually be in the CPS area. So you can see pretty obvious leak right there. So that's the very bottom. If we go further up, you can see pretty obvious leak there on the bottom of the power steering pump. And if we keep working our way up, yeah, it's just really hard to see. If we come back here, maybe, you can see more on the underside of the water pump there, which is a telltale sign of a leak from the CPS. I know it's going in and out of focus, but you can kind of see that. A little easier to see in real life. So, I'm a little torn. I'm not sure exactly where it's coming from. Um, you can see some leaking uh, residue on that just beat up oil pan, which I really despise. That'll get swapped as soon as I can, but gotta pull the engine for that. So anyway, I think the leak is coming from up in the CPS area and trickling down, and I think it's just resting on that section there. Um, looking further and further into this leak, I'm thinking more and more it's behind the timing covers. So I'm actually just going to drain the coolant and probably take out the radiator and just sort of take apart the whole front end of the engine. You can see a leak down on the bottom of the power steering pump again. Uh, I think that's all coming from the timing cover. It's very hard to see from here, uh, but uh, once you get some of the accessories out and perhaps even the crank pulley, uh, it'll be easier to see up there and, and I think we'll see where the leak's coming from. A little bit of a pain, but we got to fix the leak, so here we go. This is never a good sign. There are three clamps on a lower radiator hose. One is great, two is fine, you need a backup. Three, oh shit, that's not a good sign. Okay, this has been a little bit of a pain in the ass. So if you've got a thick aftermarket radiator, um, you don't have a whole lot of space for the fan. The fan shroud, you could remove the radiator with the fan and the fan shroud all intact 
if you can get to the fan easily and, and take that off. If you can't get the fan off very easily, which is likely if you've got an aftermarket radiator and limited space in there, um, it's probably easier to take the shroud off, or the bottom part of the shroud. That's how the shroud has to come off uh, in two pieces. So you've got this top piece uh, here and then the lower piece that I'm, I'm holding here. Two clips, got to get it from the inside. Tough to get to. One clip up there, hopefully that's on camera. And then one over here on the other side. I've taken that off. Um, so now after all that, I can lower it again. And uh, I then try and get the, uh, the radiator to come out through the top and we'll see if we can get the fan to clear the shroud. This has been a bigger pain than I remember. Uh, to get the fan off, these bolts are a little bit stuck. So what it's required is you gotta hold it in place with a screwdriver and then with a wrench, you wanna grab the nut and hopefully you can break it loose that way. Okay, the fan came out just fine. It's got clearance, we're good. Get this brace off. Let the radiator roam a little bit. See if we can liberate it from the engine bay. All right. Everything, and of course, you don't want to ding up the radiator any more than necessary. You're probably going to no matter what. But let's see how this goes. Oh, fuck. Yep, yep, you gotta do that too. Son of a bitch. I'm sorry, Shroud. I'm sorry, Radiator. Okay. Let's try that again. So there's a radiator, PWR, it's an old one, and it's not quite the right size. The hose outlets and inlets are a little bit too small. The uh, outlet for the top uh, overflow canister is the wrong size. That's kind of a pain in the ass. So, I'm not gonna be able to show you that there. Okay, there you go. So now we got a much better view of the timing cover and, and everything in the front. So I'm gonna switch over to ultraviolet and see if we can see where this oil leak may be coming from. All right, this UV business is tricky with old plastics and maybe new plastics as well, but the plastics themselves radiate quite a bit, so it's hard to tell what's coming from the plastic and what's coming from the oil. So if you look at the uh, timing cover, you can probably see that's glowing pretty good. Well, it's the actual plastic. It's not the UV dye, it's the plastic. So that is making this a little bit tricky. Yeah, you can see that pretty good in the, in the video. That plastic is just glowing. So it doesn't look like that's the problem. I'm gonna take off that cover, look behind there, see if we can see the problem further down in that timing case. All right. Now this lens just picks up a ton of light, so hopefully this will show up, but now we're getting somewhere. So here are the cams cam gears rather, and right there, 
you can see a stream of residue right there as well. It lights up pretty good. And if we look right below it, on that timing case, that's coming in, yeah, pretty good. So right there, that's glowing pretty good. Glowing pretty good below that. So if it's glowing below that, that seems like it should be coming from above that, which would make sense if it was that cam gear seal right there. Uh, as we follow it down, there's obviously more as it goes lower. Um, so I'm actually going to pull off the bottom cover because, hey, why not? We've come this far. And uh, here's the cover. And of course, you can see a lot of iridescence right there because that's wet oil. So that's where part of our leak is coming from. All right, so we just set the engine to top dead center. We've got marks on the cam gears right there that are at 12 o'clock approximately. We've got a mark on the crank right there that shows that it's at zero. And that's what you want. All right, we gotta get the power steering pump belt loose. It's this guy right here. And to do that, there's a bolt here that's your adjustment bolt, and then there's the pivot bolt, which is on the bottom side. It is actually a bolt. Um, there's no nut. I believe it threads right into a cast piece, and the bolt is going this way, so we got to get to it from the underside. So up the car goes. Okay, hopefully you got a really good view of this. So this is pretty telling. We're looking at the underside of the crank pulley. This is the timing cover. Uh, this is the oil pan. And I wiped this clean just a little bit ago. I mean, a day ago or whatever that was. So if you can see how well that's glowing, that's fresh oil, fresh oil. And you can see it dripping down from there. So I think it's definitely the cam seals that are to blame, at least for most of it. But again, I can't really tell. It looks like there's still a good amount dripping down the center. So there's a little weep hole in the bottom of that timing case because they suspected that you would get a, an oil leak there. And it's better for that oil to leak out of the timing case than to sit there with the timing gear and, and the bottom of the timing belt there. So anyway, um, that's what that looks like. We are at the point now where we could take off the crank bolt. I've got an impact gun that I'm going to try and use for the first time in a long time. And hopefully that will crack that baby loose. If it doesn't, uh, oh, it's not going to be fun. So let's hope that works. All right, so here's the situation. Uh, the cobalt did not break it loose whatsoever, not even close. So um, I got a Harbor Freight Earthquake XT Extreme whatever. So this thing's supposed to have about three times the torque. Um, so hopefully this is gonna break this puppy loose right away. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. That is what you need. So this has roughly a thousand to uh, 1200 foot pounds of removal power, um, where the other one had 370. So there you go, there's a difference, let me grab it. So Cobalt 350 versus Earthquake XT from Harbor Freight. Both run right around uh, 90 PSI, which is what they call for. Um, but obviously a huge difference in the power. That one started spinning immediately and this one wasn't going anywhere. There you go, crank bolt undone. All right, so now I need to pull out this pulley. And I was gonna get a puller for it and I had this all prepped. I made a little disc. And in reality, it just slides off. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's a small lesson in not overcomplicating shit. There you go. So now we have our first real look behind here. And we can see a bunch of 
oily residue all over everything. Everything's dirty. But again, what's new? What's an actual new leak? What's been there for years? I don't know. So, turn on the light. And it's a little bright in here, so I'm not sure how well this will show up on the video. Let's see, what does that look like? That's pretty good. So the main leak areas, it looks like just everything. It's just all over. So again, it's pooling down here again, and it's seeping out of that hole. So we know that there's fluid in the timing case. And it's just kind of misted everywhere. You can see it trickling down up there. So we've really got to get that timing case, the timing cover off so we can get access into the timing case. Clean it all up. Um, <clears throat> I'll replace the seals. Uh, probably, well, I guess we'll see when we take the cover off. Kind of stupid to guess now. So we'll take the cover off, see what we have. Okay, this is to give you an idea of what was required to get the AC bracket. The AC compressor is right above my hand there. I'll try and give you a better picture of this after I zoom out here. But this is the AC compressor. This is the bracket that holds the AC compressor on. There are two bolts on the side of the bracket that are required to at least loosen so that you can move. We wanna move the bracket that way so that we get clearance for the timing cover that I'll show you right now. So anyway, it took uh, a couple U, uh, one U joint and then a couple wobble extensions. There you go, so now you can see the bracket. That's the bracket, that's the AC compressor. The bracket is in the way, we can't get this off. This needs to come off of these studs here. So you need to undo the side bolts, the side mount bolts that are on the back side of the block, or the side of the block. And then this can come forward. The AC compressor can just hang there while we take care of this. It's a pain. Okay, we're looking behind the case cover now into just the case. And I'm sorry if this isn't all in focus, but right along the edge of that cover, hopefully you can see a pretty clear line of glowing material. That's our UV dyed oil. It goes on both sides. Uh, it's pretty evident. If we try to focus a little higher, <clears throat> you can kind of trace it up. And where it seems to be coming from the worst is up towards the, the cam seals. Okay, we're going to take off the timing belt now so that we can get to uh, behind the pulleys, really clean out the timing case and just verify that there aren't any other leaks hiding back there. So, to do that, we need to break loose this guy. Okay. Now we need to grab a pry bar or a screwdriver and use this guy as leverage to push that. Now we want to tighten that same bolt. And that way we're tightened in the loose position. And now hopefully this belt will just slide right on off. Shimmy that right off. Here's our timing belt removed. Now you could do this a different way. You certainly don't need an impact for this, but I already took the belt off. I realize now it would have been easier to crack these loose. I've got the impact, may as well use that. It'll be quick, easy. And there is a pin in here, so be careful of that. to leave the pin in or take it out. I always take it out. So hopefully that shows through real well in the video. Definitely a leak there. Definitely a leak there. Pretty obvious. 
and that trickles down into the rest of the timing case, fills it with oil, and it just looks shitty. Jesus, okay. There you go. So that would be your leak, huh? That's pretty obvious. <clears throat> Doesn't get a whole lot more fluorescent than that. So it, it was just pouring out of these seals. Here's the crank. I just pulled the seal out. And you just want to make sure that it's really clean. I mean, you want it to be mirror spotless on that sealing surface. And I think I'm about there. It's kind of hard for me to see, but yeah, that's pretty good. So we'll insert this. I'm going to grab a little bit of oil just so it slips on nice. But uh, there's that, and you just tap that into place. Again, you want to make sure that it goes in real straight. You don't want it to start rotating or uh, get off camber or anything. You want it to go real flat, straight, and on. So that's the crank. Um, this one's going to be tough to pull out. I'm probably going to have to pierce it and then yank it out with a pick. Um, I'm not looking forward to that. That's going to be pretty tough. But we'll try and do that. And then way up top, which you can barely see, the cam seals. Uh, same kind of deal there. I don't think I have to remove the, uh, the cam caps. I'm going to try not to. But it'll be the same thing. It's going to be kind of pinched in there. So maybe a little tough to remove and tough to drive in straight. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to drive this into place. Um, I've, is that focused? There you go. All right. Uh, so uh, I've got the crank pulley, the timing belt pulley, I guess that is, um, just loosely installed, just slipped on, and I've got a socket that clears the nose of the crank, and now I've got a really nice aligned, flat application of force. So now I'm just going to tap that into place with the hammer. And if I'm lucky, I can do this with other things, but as you see right there, or maybe you do, lighting's poor. Um, the socket is not quite big enough to clear, so I gotta try and find something else. Okay, we got the two lower seals done. The oil seal came out with, uh, hang on, with a pick. Okay, it's not this pick, but imagine this pick being straight. And uh, just poked at it right there. You don't want to get the surface of the aluminum, you don't want to get the surface of this, of the metal shaft. But if you pick right at the edge of the seal, you should be able to kind of pry it up and out, and it just slipped right out. And then the new one was able to almost press in by hand, but then finished it with this socket, which is not ideal, because the surface is all hexagonal, but it worked well enough. Um, so, yeah, it's having a hard time focusing. There we go. But uh, yeah, pretty easy to slip that in. That's what you want it to look like. Nice and even, flush, and that should seal up just fine. Now I'm gonna lower the car, get it uh, down onto the ground, and work on the cams from above. I just pulled out one of the cam cover, or the cam seals, and I just dropped it on the floor, shit. Okay, take two. Uh, so here's the cam seal off. It actually came off real easy. Used a pick like this, pierced kind of the center area. Let's see if I can do this one live with one hand. If I can do it with one hand, you can certainly get it done. So just like that. So you kind of fish hook it. Come on, focus. I know it's blurry, hang on. There we go, geez, all right. So see, you do that and it just breaks the seal right away. So I'm gonna mess with that with two hands, but that's how you get it off. Now, there's obviously crap in there. So I'm gonna grab the shop vac, vacuum that out, wipe it down real good before I put the next one in. All right, cam seal's in place. That went in far easier than I expected. Came out pretty easy as well. New seals are very soft and rubbery. The old ones were crusty and crumbling. That's why we had a leak. So this should resolve most of my leak issues. I'm sure there'll be more. Because hey, it's a uh, 20 some year old car. But that should be most of them. I'm gonna put it all back together now. 
get the timing belt back on, get the gears on, pulleys, and hopefully we've got a leak-free car and we can put it on the dyno. Alright, you're going to have to bear with me because I don't have a tripod, but, uh, so, to tighten this pulley, and a couple of the others, you can do a similar sort of approach. So we've got the wrench precariously balanced there. Alright, so, got your torque wrench, which you need for this sort of thing. If you don't have one, check the uh, description, I got a link to this Tecton one I've been really happy with. Torque here is 16 foot-pounds or 192 inch-pounds, I believe. And uh, what you want to do to stop the pulley from turning, insert something, screwdriver or extension here, and pin it against that rib and the wheel of the gear, and uh, just torque it down like that. It should be fine. Okay, we got a bunch of things together. We've got the crank pulley installed. Um, before that, we attached this lower timing cover, that's timing cover number one, I believe Toyota calls it. Uh, idler pulley there for the uh, AC belt. Uh, the timing belt is loosely installed, it's not up on the cams obviously. I installed the cams, I have not torqued these, so I need to torque those. Um, torque on the crank is 195 foot-pounds, that's a lot of torque, a lot of torque. Um, what I do is pull the e-brake, put the car in fifth gear, and then uh, try and turn over that, or try and uh, tighten it, and the car should resist. It's going to try and roll forward, but uh, you should be able to get it. Um, and let's see what else. AC bracket was placed back on, um, and I think that's about all I've done since the last video. So uh, now I need to get the timing belt installed and aligned to make sure all the match marks are correct. You can see we've got the crank at top dead center zero exactly right there. Um, so we'll uh, get these matched up, get the belt on, and I'm reusing the belt. I'm not doing a new belt. I'm going to take the car apart again at some point to do some upgraded internals. It doesn't get driven a whole lot. The timing belt looks like it's in great shape. The idler was good. I left that all alone. Could have spent 50 bucks on it, or more. But I uh, just didn't think that was worth it. So, um, I guess we're gonna move on. I wanted to show what this looks like now. Um, the cams are pointed upright, so they're in their correct orientation. They're pointed right at the match, or the, uh, I guess they call it match mark right there at the top of the timing case, I pointed right towards that, maybe a little bit that way. But uh, what I'm going to do now is loosen this guy so it pulls tension on there. And then what you do is you want to relieve tension here. You want to ensure that there's tension from here down on the bottom side and make sure that it also lines up. And then you apply tension this way and this way and then check the deflection of the belt and make sure that you've got a proper amount of deflection there. So I've got a dial indicator here and I was trying to measure the belt tension per the TSRM and I'm just having a hard time getting a real accurate reading. Um, so I've got the dial indicator there and then you know push down with a certain amount of force. Um, it's tough to measure the force you're pushing down with um, but I do have a chunk of aluminum, a little block, um, that weighs right around two kilograms, and uh, the deflection is less than what's stated in the TSRM. Really, you're supposed to, as I understand it, be torquing both of these at the same time as you're putting weight down and measuring. It's a lot to do with one person, so good enough, close enough for me. I know the belt's not excessively loose. You want to check that the tension here and there is about the same, and you can just go by feel there. And make sure that obviously all the match marks line up. You want to be pointed at the match mark there, there, and then you want to be at, of course, zero right down there. There you go. So that is how you set timing on a 7M.
nice and smoky. Just like before, I wouldn't expect any less. But uh, obviously I got the timing right, timing belt teeth are all aligned correctly because that's just purring like a kid. Right off the bat. So I'm just going to let it run and let it warm up a little bit. Um, cooling system, you do not need to burp a 7M. I keep repeating this over and over and over again. You do not need to burp a 7M. If you have to burp your 7M's cooling system, you have a problem with your 7M cooling system. Uh, there you go. You should just be able to fill it up, start it, run it. It'll pull fluid from the overflow container to fill up the radiator. Um, if it doesn't do that properly, there's an air uh, leak somewhere or a coolant leak somewhere that is pulling in air. So there you go. I think this job is done. Uh, now it's just time to check for leaks, make sure that we got rid of our problem. And then we can put it on a dyno and get a power measure for a stock 7M BTE that is round about 25 years old, 26, 7 years old, something like that. Um, this is a JDM motor that uh, the previous owner put back in, so this is out of uh, 89 to 91, somewhere in there. I think the castings are pretty recent, uh, recent in quotation marks because, hey, these are all old. But uh, anyway, there you go. Sounds like a good job done. I'll watch for leaks and uh, I gotta fix vacuum hose there. That's not supposed to go like that, but I don't have a long enough hose to fix that right now. So there we go. We're done. Here she is all buttoned up. I finished the job a couple months ago, been driving it sporadically since then. It's winter in Colorado, so can't drive it too often. But it's more or less ready for spring. Uh, no major leaks, not losing any coolant, not losing any significant amount of oil. And got some new rubber parts throughout, uh, some old, so still have some old intake rubber there. I uh, got a new BVSV, BVSV, uh, and still need to do a pretty thorough once over on the engine. I'm more or less just leaving it as is because I know I'm going to be taking that out. So. Uh, that's about it for the engine. Stay tuned for a video on exhaust and It's locked now, but you can see the door panels off got the new steering wheel in there So I'll post those videos. I've also got some new Interior parts for the console e-brake boot and shift boot. We'll get those swapped out and then paint This spring still planning on that you can see the filter mechanism over there on the wall. We're getting prepared And we'll be doing paint soon so that's it. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, and stay tuned.